you know, the struggle is real. That, that statement, the struggle is real. And what I thought was cool is because I, I, lo- I love talking about that, the struggle being real. And I always love bringing it back to, you know, the struggle is real, the struggle is real, it is, you know. But if you're not actively engaged in something to overcome that struggle, if you're not actively doing something to, you know, pursue something greater, then that struggle becomes a choice of yours. That struggle becomes a surrender to the thing you're struggling with, which is when we think of the struggle as real, we only think of the worldly things that we're struggling with. We're thinking of our, our time. We're thinking of our finances, our health, our relationships, um, you know, our, our careers. That those are things that, that, that we see as our, as our daily struggle. When people talk about, you know, I, I, as soon as I start to get ahead, you know, something happens and it knocks me back down again. You know, and and then I get back up and I try to do it again and then something happens. And and, and this is that struggle, that back and forth that so many people talk about. But when you look into it, when you apply the word of God to it, what we find out is that this struggle that people talk about all the time, it isn't in reality. It's not a struggle with 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 earthly, with worldly things. When we're having problems in our finances, when we're having problems in our, in, our, in our relationships, in our career, in our health, those types of things, we can see it as a struggle with that particular thing. But what's happening is we're actually having a struggle with the things of God and His Word. Because there is a, something in His Word for every single situation you come across. If you're, having, if you're struggling with your finances and you're like, man, I, I can't seem to, to get ahead on my bills, on my account, um, you know, my savings is gone, I'm negative in my account, I, I'm behind on my power bill and all these things. And you're like, man, the struggle is real. I just can't seem to put enough food on the table. And you're thinking that your struggle is with these worldly things. Well, go to the word of God. What does the word of God say about your finances? What are some of the things that bring blessing into your finances? God says that we're to be a good steward of, 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 of his provision to us. Right. So, so many times as men, we, we take on that burden of being the provider for our family, which that is a position that, that we hold. But as the head of our family, as the provider, we must always look to God as the main provider of that. And what God provides into our life, we're to be a good steward of that provision. And so if we look at, okay, what has God brought into my life? What are the, what are the blessings that have come? Have I been a good steward of them? Am I struggling with my bills? Am I struggling with these worldly things? Or am I struggling with actually being a good steward of the provision that God has already given me? And then when we look at that, it brings us into a different perspective. Too often we struggle with the word of God. We struggle with what he says. Man, I'm struggling in my marriage and this and that. Okay, well, what does God's word say about your marriage? Are you being the husband that God has called you to be? Are you loving your wife the way Christ loved the church? Are you raising your children in the way that the word tells you to raise them? Are you aligned with those things? And all too often when we're thinking that we're struggling with these worldly things, we can look at that word of God and we can go, oh, well, yeah, I am kind of. But, you know, and and maybe we, we don't want it. We don't want to hear that. As husbands, if we're struggling in our marriage, the last thing we want to hear is, what are you doing as a husband? Are you loving your wife the way Christ loved the church? I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about her. I want to talk about these things. Well, no, what are, what, what are you doing? How are you responding? As many times in my life as I've been put in a position to know that I must go to God in every situation of my life or it's going to fall apart. There's still times that I run into situations where I go, no, nope, it's okay, God. I know this. I, I've been down this road. I'll, I'll handle it. And the Holy Spirit's going, this isn't the road you think it is. It may look like it, but this is a totally different road you haven't been down before, and you're going to need me to help you. But if I don't take that time to be transparent and open and seek God on those things, then it's going to fall apart. And so that struggle, my struggle wasn't with my relationship, my struggle wasn't with my wife. My struggle was with, did I go to God? Did I seek the word of God before I made a decision? Nope. That's where my struggle was. My struggle was with God. And so we find ourselves in a tug of war match with him. When we think we're in a tug of war match with things of this world, we have to take a step back and go, you know what? I'm not in a tug of war match with the things of this world because If I'm in Christ, I've overcome these things. If I'm in Christ, then these things have no power and authority over me. So what am I doing battling with them? 
What am I doing, uh, you know, uh, uh, having a fist fight with the devil over these things when I, I can stand and say, you know what, Jesus already defeated you. My struggle is with, have I gone into the word of God? Have I gone into prayer? Have I submitted myself to, to, to the Holy Spirit to say, guide me and lead me and go out before me?